want to start by thanking Congregation Abonim and Ellie for inviting us. Can you hear me? Yeah. My voice is pretty booming, so. Uh, so to thank them for asking us to partner on this very important event in Holocaust Education Week for all the work that goes into this. I want to also recognize that we're on the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee, the Métis, the Wendat, and most recently the Mississaugas of the New Credit, whose land we're on today. Um, and I want to begin by thanking the storytellers, and in particular, Pankhaz, and you'll have to share with Jules our thanks to her mother, uh, for the incredible effort and the incredible tasks that we ask them every time they share their story. And I had the great privilege of sitting with Pankhaz this morning on another panel, where he was sharing with uh, about 100 young adults. And it's in those stories, and, and as well, a thank you to Ellie, not simply for this event, but for all the stories that he keeps and shares and does it so beautifully. Because in the storytelling, as you just heard from some of the MGR, MGR, MRH participants, we find permission to see each other in our stories. And that's what we gathered here today, I think, so beautifully to do, to find ourselves in the experiences because we recognize that history is alive today. And that knowledge is what helped Avram Rosenzweig, who's very much uh, interwoven with this institution, um, to found Be'a Hafta in the height of the Rwandan genocide. He saw the lessons of the Shoah alive and said that the Jewish community has a responsibility to respond. And that guiding light has led us for the last 20 years as we continue to build bridges with other communities. And most recently, for the last four years, to really build bridges with First Nations communities and to try to reconcile the history of Canada, which unfortunately, as we've heard tonight, is just not well known. Uh, how do we reconcile a history um, of 150,000 children being forcibly removed from their homes with the sole intent of destroying their heritage, of destroying their familial connections, of destroying any hope of a better future. And it's in the tribute to the survivors um, that the truth, uh, the survivors of residential schools actually are the reason why we have the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. They were the ones who argued for it, and they were the ones who put it into the final settlement agreement. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, this is a good time to go Google after this www.trc.ca. Uh, because that's how I think we start to hear the other stories. And it's also in that acknowledgement and that they have to try to respond to the TRC's calls to action by taking responsibility in a sense for the Jewish community's knowledge. And that's why we've invested in public education, in professional development for Jewish educational institutions, um, and as well in courses that help Jewish but also everyday Canadians help understand how we can play a role in a more just future. Um, so thank you all for gathering tonight to hear stories and maybe continue to hear each other's stories and build a better world. Thanks. So thank you, Dan. I began the evening by saying that at the end of the day, we're all about hope. And I started off that little story about that First Nations girl seeing her parents disappearing in the plane. I think that we in Canada now have a sea change. There is a real recognition among Canadians of the history of First Nations in Canada, the tragedy that was visited upon them. There's also a real sense of hope and vibrancy and confidence in young First Nations people reclaiming their heritage. And that image of that girl's parents disappearing, you know, when she's in the plane getting smaller, I think it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter. So may we all continue this journey of peace and hope. Thank you very much. God bless you.